Welcome adventurers, my name is Cody and this is Taking 20, a channel about all things role playing games. And today I have a special guest, my good friend Brian Walter is joining us from Bugbears and Brews to talk some shop here. So I hope you guys are ready, let's get started. All right, Brian. Well, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for for squeezing out some time for me and uh, and hopping on to uh, to chat. So, uh, I, thanks for thanks for coming on for a little bit here. Oh, and thank you for having me. Uh, you know, when you first approached me with this, I was super excited and uh, thought it just kind of fall by not saying that you know we're both busy guys. I thought you know you talk that pipe dream it never happens. Dude, so. dude, for for real, for real. So here's what, here's the topic for today, right? I want to talk about. Uh, that kind of toxic environment that happens about when players kind of have that players versus dungeon masters or when dungeon masters think it's them versus the players, that whole kind of mentality that happens at the table. So I don't know, is that something that you, you've you actually encountered before? I mean, I, I imagine most probably have. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've all had it happen. Let's not lie to ourselves. If you say it's never happened, you're not being honest. Um, I, it's not bad all the time. Sometimes it's good to fall into that mentality. Not that often, but you know, sometimes it's good to kick it up a level, especially on the harder fights. Um, but it's just a matter of how often does it happen and how vicious does it get, I think are, are two major things. I think for your big boss fight to go and fall into that player versus DM mentality, that might not be a bad thing. Not saying always do that, but um, maybe you know, maybe if you have like a power gamer or something like that, guys that they're you know your party's well prepared. The, right. The encounter's balanced and you're trying to do something kind of difficult. Maybe maybe it's not that big of a deal to kind of try and kill them actively with those those monsters or big bad evil guy. Right. As long as it's appropriate for the monster too, let's be honest there. You wouldn't have your goblin doing this, but your archmage <laughs> might be a little bit more uh prepared more smart on the tactics and whatnot. <laughs> might know a lot more about your PCs than they know about him. I get it. I get it. Yep. I'm with you. I'm with you, Brian. Not a problem. I'm with you, man. So let me ask you this. What are some things that we do as dungeon masters that creates this kind of this kind of bad environment like like i know you're talking about sometimes it happens and it's okay but but what are some specific things that we do as dungeon masters that actually kind of let players think like this and let dungeon masters think like this that, that maybe we should avoid or, or work on to do a little differently uh, i know for me i tend to fall in the the dm versus player hole as you would say or we can say uh when I have a really competitive player that treats it like a war game, if they start feeding into it first, I go and I'm, I got to reel it back and I'll be like, oh man, they're, they're laying out these beautiful strategies. They got these nice traps. Of course, my monsters don't know about those traps. So it's, a lot of it's shutting off that meta knowledge. And it's really hard to do, uh, you know, when you're like, there's no way I should be walking into this trap, but your monsters don't know about that trap. So, so if you have your monsters skip the trap because you rolled their perception or whatever. You didn't just take the passive. And then you're, you're saying that maybe that can cause players that have laid out this brilliant plan to see it foiled by the monsters. And, and that kind of creates that this hardened, well, the DM wasn't going to give it to us anyways, because he wanted it, this fight to go on right. this way. Right. Or the, uh, my, one of my favorite ones is, um, well, why aren't you going for the guy in full plate that's in front of everybody? Well, because it's a weak goblin. It doesn't, it doesn't want to go against the guy that's a walking tower. He wants to go against the guy that's not wearing any armor. That's exactly right, man. You gotta you just get in there and, and get get in melee range with your with your casters. That's I mean that's what goblins are for. You just overwhelm them and run right past all your all your fighters and, and watch yeah, the take the attack of opportunity, rush on through. <laughs> watch the wizards in the back going, guys, um, guys, do you have any potions, guys? Um, yeah, that's always fun to do. Uh, I will tell you this, as as a player, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this topic is because it's it's really near and dear to my heart on the on the player side. Uh, obviously, this is something I work on as a dungeon master, but one of the main reasons I actually left my last group was because I had a, a dungeon master that was definitely kind of kind of encapsulated with this player versus uh, dungeon master mentality, and I think a lot of it had to do. I, I think a lot of it was well-intentioned, and I think that was kind of the most disheartening part about it, was because he was trying to create these really complex combats, and he didn't want to see us get through the night without 
doing all of like you know without checking all these boxes okay we had a role play Mm -hmm. we had a shop we had a trap and a puzzle and now it's combat time and no matter what the pillars dude right right and and i think that was one of the biggest problems i had and it got really really bad uh there for a little while where it was like okay you go up uh we were playing pathfinder so it was like you know i I go up and i i try to like push the guy into the pit and he's in super plate armor and everything and i've got a maxed out barbarian and and I, I roll my 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 CMB of like 24, and he's like, oh no, that misses. He you, you don't push him back five feet. And I was like, you're kidding me, uh, you know. And he's like, oh well, no, okay, I guess he goes into the pit. And then the next round, before I could even attack, the guy climbs up in full plate mail for you know 30 feet out of a, a pit, you know, a hole in the ground. And he was just like, okay, this is getting, <laughs> this is getting a little out of hand at the moment. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I tried to to address it with him, and I think that was one of the biggest problems was. Because sometimes when people criticize, it's, you know, even if it's like, a, hey, listen, here's a problem. I'd like to work through it. Uh, dude, if Dungeon Masters, if Dungeon Masters don't take that the right way, it's 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 not going to end well. And I think that's ultimately kind of what happened to the last group. So I, I know you don't really have that from the player's perspective, but have you have you had any of your players like call you out on, on different stuff like that that you've done in a game? Um, I personally have not been called out. If anything, it's been, uh, like I said, uh, there's been issues where I might have creatures run away and they think I'm pulling strings or pulling the punches and going easy on them, but it's more of a self-preservation tactic. So it's kind of a reverse DM versus player. They think at times I'm going too soft on them. Well, no, that smart bandit's going to want to live and go home and see his wife or girlfriend or whatever and get whatever loot he has. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's a big one, big problem for for newer players not understanding that you don't have to chase every monster for sure. Right. Sometimes running them off is just fine. Dude, right? I mean, it's like guys, just let them go. It's it's gonna be okay. I promise. We'll we'll keep playing. We're gonna have a lot of fun, and and I'm not robbing you of any loot. Okay, I promise. He's gonna drop that bag as he runs away. Um, but <laughs> being from in the Adventure League format where I manage a couple other tables, uh, there was a, a previous guy that used to run a table. And you would just hear he his, his table was next to mine, and you'd hear him say just some like the, oh, all of a sudden seven more reinforcements come on the last wave, or I suddenly remember that they have this magic spell or this super ability. Dude, that yeah, you can never say what what, what was it? You can never say, oh, I forgot or something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, that like it's like immediately right there you're. Oh, I forgot. Your players are going to think, okay, well, it doesn't matter what we did. The the DM's just making stuff up now to make things harder. Uh, I think I think that perception of players not having player agency, their choices not mattering. Their you know combat's going to go exactly like this. It's going to be this many rounds. It's going to take up you know ninety minutes of our of our play session. And if it goes faster than that, then the DM's going to keep throwing stuff like yep. that. That I think that's exactly what that does. Whenever you forget something, like, dude, just make a new combat or, or something like that. Yeah, spin it off to some other encounter after that. Who cares? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you can still challenge your players. That's not a problem at all. So, no, go ahead. I no, you man, go. No, it's all you. It's all you. Go ahead. No, so, so the other thing that um, the less obvious of the player versus DM is the role play players versus DM, where uh, the DM will take that uh, non, that role play encounter and treat it as the NPC trying to stop the players when really it's that's not the PC's goal. You want to fulfill what that NPC's goal is. Maybe it, they're actually going to try to swindle the players into accomplishing their goal for them. And, and you, your players have that high, kind of like where when they try to bargain with somebody and you have these goals in mind for, for the NPC and what they're trying to convince either through deception or... Uh, persuasion or, or whatever system you're running, you know, they're trying to persuade that PC, that NPC, excuse me, to do something that goes against their goals or that may not align directly with those goals. And then your players suddenly think, you know, this is, this is the dungeon master never negotiating with us, with our NPCs. We might as well just be murder hobos. Right. And, and dude, that's really tough as a, as a dungeon master, because you try to like, I mean, like, what are some things that we can do to avoid that? Because, I feel like a lot of times that may be a a perception on the players that that's kind of more difficult to get them on the same page with you. Yeah, so uh, avoiding it from the role play perspective is quite a bit harder to demonstrate to a player 
that's definitely uh, first thing to acknowledge there. Um, you know, not saying that you guys have to be iron will sticking to, to their guns to accomplish their goal, but then again, a roll of a nat 20 on a persuasion check, if a guy's a crazy zealot, he's not going to care. That's exactly you know? right. I will say one tip that I would have for dungeon masters running into this problem is to don't sweat the small stuff. You know, if your players, you know, I think so many dungeon masters get worried about gold. They get so worried about gold. Like they're so worried about over giving their players gold. And I think that's kind of silly because I don't think I've ever had a game where my players were too rich and they could just buy everything. Like I've never encountered that. And, you know, if you're having a player that maybe has, a, takes a lot of fun in negotiating constantly, yep. uh, you know, hey, oh, they're going to pay us 20 gold. What about 30 gold? Oh, no, we need 50 gold. Cool. We need... Yeah. Or you do this when they accumulate that massive amount of gold and they go on their spending spree. Like I, I did this in one of my recent encounters. They draw the attention of somebody they don't want because they're dropping all this money. Dude, I mean, absolutely. You can use it as a plot point. And, and I think that, that that's kind of one of those, if, if your players may feel like you're not negotiating with them ever on your, on your NPCs and they're never able to persuade them and they're never able to deceive them, then, you know, perhaps take, you know, take a step back on some of the small stuff that's not very impactful, like a quest giver's gold or at a shopkeeper, because you can turn, a, okay, so what, your players have a little extra gold, you know, like you said, Brian, you can turn that into, into a plot twist for suddenly attra attracting attention from assassins and thieves guilds and, and, you know, nobility and, and all kinds of yep. things. And instead of, instead of sweating that kind of, always having that kind of butting heads with your NPCs. With yeah, the what's an extra potion? Dude, right. I mean, okay, they can go on an extra day or something, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but that was that's definitely one I think that, that I run into. I know that that was one in the game my, my uh, younger brother's playing, the, the Storm King Thunder game where I'm streaming on Twitch right now. Uh, that's one that he, you know, he brought up to me. He said, hey, dude, we never win. And I was like, well... I mean, you're wrong. You win all the time, but don't don't it's, tell your players that. <laughs> like I said, that, it's really hard to point out the role play to the players. Like, yeah, you did win X, Y, and Z here. They budged on these, which allowed you know further things to happen. They might not get their final outcome um, based on what happens during that session there, but you might have gone further than you would have initially thought. So it's a lot harder to demonstrate to players that they are winning those versus combat where they see the guys dropping and they see you doing proper tactics. Well, Brian, man, I just want to say I had a ton of fun and uh, thank you for hopping on with me and then kind of let me ramble a little bit about, uh, about this player versus DM thing, man. I, I really appreciate it and I can't wait to do it again. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, I'm glad that this came to fruition and I, I'm really glad that we got this topic out there. Let other DMs know they're not alone, and hopefully there's some uh, cures to some of their ailments with this. Man, I totally agree. So hopefully you guys were able to to uh, get a little bit of advice from that. And, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you guys. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Table Talk. For you guys that haven't had a chance to check out Brian's channel, Bugbears and Brews, yet, I'm going to put a link in the description below. And what I want you to do is right after this video, get your butts over there. Go check out his channel. He's got some really great stuff already. He's just now starting out. And uh, I've already even used some of his advice uh, in my games that I'm streaming on Twitch, uh, the Storm King's Thunder game. So go over, check out his channel, show him some love, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time.